Hey golfers, I'm Drew Maholder, Second Swing Golf here at the 2024 PGA Show in Orlando. We're at the Ping booth with Travis Milliman, uh, Design Engineer Manager for Ping with the Ping G73 iron. So, yeah. Uh, new model this year in 2024. A lot to be excited about here, Travis. So, yeah. uh, kind of get us started. Just what is you know, what are the main takeaways that golfers will you know maybe experience when they first put these irons in the bag and hit them? Yeah, yeah. This is an iron very much geared towards um, creating maximum forgiveness we can deliver within an yeah. iron set. So, um, the attributes we would be looking at it's the largest blade length, longest blade length, most forgiving sole. It's a wide sole iron. Yeah. Um, has ample amounts of offset. So when we're looking at all those key characteristics, we're really focused around how do we help maybe that golfer that struggles getting the ball in the air, uh, needs some mishit forgiveness. Yeah. How do we help them out, right? Mm -hmm. um, so delivering this larger body, uh, ensuring that we have the face designed properly to get more flexing is gonna deliver that for that player. So. Sure. So in, in talking about your other iron models, I guess, in your line, so the G430 is there. Yeah, not is, going anywhere. So that's still there, yes, right? Yes, yes. Uh, now that was probably, this is a little bit larger than G430. Yep. Is it essentially, and comparing to the G710, is it just stepping right on top of that as the newest kind yeah, of? Yeah, if we're looking at size profile, 430 is kind of that bread and butter for our lineup. 730 will sit to the right of that. It'll be a little bit bigger, um, pretty much on top of the 710. So okay. 710 was that, if you remember that black yeah. yep, um, yep. premium finish. So. Um, this will basically be that same category of player. And uh, we think that it is a nice complement to 430, okay. not to yeah. overtake 430. So right, this is yeah. gonna be a complement. Um, it's a little bit longer. It's uh, three to five yards longer than 430. Okay. So it's a lot of the focus around this is getting more distance because we do realize the player that's best served by this iron, that's the thing they're missing. They need yeah. help getting the ball in the air. And a little bit more distance. Sure, and so. I also see on the uh, on the badge the Pure Flex. Oh, so yeah. that, it's here. that technology is coming over. still from the G430. So uh, can you maybe give us a refresher on, on what the Pure Flex technology does yeah. for the irons? So the Pure Flex technology we first debuted in the G430 iron. It's essentially our way to help dampen unwanted vibrations and impact. We realized when we were designing a distance iron, we want to design that face very thin, right? The thinner it is, the more flexion it has and the more ball speed you can get. So in designing this iron, kind of a trickle down of 430, we, we said, hey, we want that thinness for deflection, yeah. but we want to be able to dampen it without restriction. So pure flex, we basically take a badge, traditional badge, and make it flexible. We cut it, we, it's basically cut up into different sections to allow it to independently flex upon impact. So okay. we still have the great ball speed, right? but the, the properties of the badge help to dampen some of those unwanted vibrations. So sure. definitely it's something we yeah. felt like was working with 430. So. Sure. It's here again. Yeah, and then lastly, you want to talk about some of these components here as well, you know, shafts, stock items, things like that. So talk, can we run through quickly just stock shafts that are with the G730 irons? Yeah, so the shaft we have here is the DG Mid 100. So it's the new lineup for the True Temper family and yep. the Dynamic Gold. Uh, stock grip on this iron is the Lampkin Crossline. Uh, we do have uh, our mix of no upcharge offerings outside of that, kind of the same mix you'd see with the 430 product. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's kind of the default for now. So it's a new shaft for us, the new shaft for True Temper, the yeah. DG Mid, um, and it's tested out pretty well so far. So. Very nice, very nice. Well, um, we're gonna do some testing with these now on the G730s, Perfect. but uh, we got the, the technology rundown. I think I'm excited about how far these things are gonna go. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. uh, Travis, thank you for your time here at the PJ Show. Thank you so much. All right, we're back in the bay here at Second Swing Minnetonka, and we have a returning special guest. Um, Jackie Johnson's back with us. Jackie has been on the channel several times in the past, back at Second Swing now. Um, G730 irons today, Jackie. I know you've been fitting for both G730 and I-530 a little bit already. So um, you've got G730. What can you tell me a little bit about that, you know, just what it looks like, um, you know, kind of what you think we'll see in the testing? Yeah, I mean, this club is really designed Obviously, it's packed full of forgiveness, right? Yeah. Um, you know, comparing it to G430, right? It's a club that's going to go, um, you know, maybe more for the slower swing speed player. Yeah. Uh, try to help get the ball up in the air. So I, I'm expecting, compared to the G430, maybe a little bit uh, higher launch. I could be wrong, but yeah. typically with this club, you know, you're trying to get someone in there that needs help with height. Right, get the ball in the air, still pack full forgiveness. Um, but you know, I would suspect that the head weight's just maybe a little bit lighter too, um, yeah. compared to the G430. Again, for the slower swing speed player, gonna help them uh, get a little bit more uh, height to the ball as well as speed. 
uh, mm -hmm. in the swing. So yeah, I think it's as Ping has said, it's the most forgiving and the longest iron that they've ever made. Yeah. Um, so they're clearly aiming for both for forgiveness and distance here. So um, we'll see what uh, shows up here in the testing. There's a good first swing there. So what uh, for the viewers, I guess, typical, you know, numbers that you, I guess, well, first of all, what seven iron, or what iron set do you play? And then um, how far does your seven iron typically go? Well, I have the new AI smokes. Okay. Um, typically with that club, I'm hitting it. I mean, as of recently, it's been like 155 with okay. seven iron. In total? Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, typically my club speed when I'm, you know, warm is probably close to 73, 74. Okay. I should be hitting it around, yeah, I don't know, 150. Yep. A little bit chunky there. Okay. How does that club look at address? Do you like, do you see anything behind the top line there or is it pretty clean? No, I don't see anything behind the top line. It does a pretty good job of hiding uh, the tungsten weight in the back. Definitely offset. Yeah, sure. Um, more than I'm used to, but I would say, you know, obviously with ping, it's one of the bigger things. You know, they're going to be a little bit more offset. Help yep. them, help the golfer uh, hit it straighter. Yep. Um, Toey. Yeah. Not the best. Okay. There's some extra ball speed on that one. Yep. Oh, that spin is. Some low spin? Yeah. Was that one uh, like a, was that a pretty solid strike on that one? No, I'd say definitely a little bit toey. Okay. Turn the club head over just a little bit. I That's what I tend to do with ping, if I'm being honest, is like, the head weight is just so different. A little different, yeah. So I always have this tendency to turn it over maybe mm. a little bit too much. And then I try to correct. <laughs> Oof. Oh God, that's gonna be low. Is that low in the face? Yeah. Get forgiving. Went straight. Dead straight, went 147 yards. Obviously lower in height there because yeah. I didn't hit it great. That was better. Yeah, that sounded pretty darn good. A little, very crisp. Yeah. All right. So that's a good shot right there. Yeah. Getting used to the club a little bit. Over 80 feet, the over 45 degree landing angle on that one. Another solid uh, one there. A little open. Yeah. That's still solid though. Yeah. How does it feel to you? Does it feel like a kind of powerful iron, I imagine? Yeah, I mean, when it, when it you know, you square it up on the club face, definitely. You know, I'm right now I'm hitting it, a lot of them off the toe. <laughs> but like, overall, like when it's more towards the center, it's, you know, obviously shooting off the club face pretty good. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right, that's several good shots there to kind of wrap it up. You, you got you got loose and comfortable with that, that club here towards the end of the, the hitting here. So I've got 10 shots now. Let's see if I can. Now, what we'll probably do is look at the dispersion here, see if there's maybe one or two that might be quote unquote outliers. Yep. Um, maybe yeah, that one. This one here for great. sure. We'll we can get out of there. I'm trying to look at like spin too, because it seemed like your good ones here were kind of in the four thousands. Yep. I think this one might have been one that was kind of like low on the face. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe this one even too. Or this one. I don't know. Well, I'll leave it up to you with which one we probably. Uh, you can get rid of the two, the number two, the one yeah. way left. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's just roll with these ones here. Okay. So. Let's see, we've got our best what seven shots up there out of 10. And obviously we kind of discussed some of the other, all 10 shots, if you will. But I mean, what do you see, you know, numbers wise here, Jackie, that might jump out at you as a fitter? Is there anything, obviously there's 
some good things here to, to look at. I think that for, for being a 28 degree club, I feel like it was launching pretty high in the air. Oh yeah, for sure. It definitely is launching in the air. Um, you know, obviously I think for the club head speed that I'm swinging right now, um, you know, overall, uh, distance is good with the spin as well. I mean, for a club that again, like you said, 28 degrees, you know, it's definitely getting height. Yeah. I think a lot of times when you're talking about, um, the loss these days, like the biggest thing is making sure that, you know, again, a number on a club is a number on a club, yeah. especially nowadays. So right. like all you're really looking for is making sure that you're getting some good, um, landing angles and making sure that the spin rate is, is in a good spot so that yeah. a player is not just, you know, um, le getting the ball to roll out way right. too much. So making sure we're getting good height, good landing. angle. this definitely, I mean, to me, um, you know, I mean, on honestly, I probably only hit about two good shots. <laughs> so like overall, um, definitely when you're taking a look at the average player, um, this club is sure full pack of forgiveness. Yeah. Um, you know, the biggest thing that I always, uh, when you're talking about fitting, especially into these clubs that are really forgiving is, you know, obviously the soles are a little bit thicker. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I felt like there's like, before I hit the ball, just a lot of friction more yeah. than I'm used to. And that's just, you know, the sole, just how I hit the ball yeah. is, is causing that a little bit. And maybe just, you know, um, impacting my, yeah. uh, well, it, it's, it, it's different than you're used to, I think a little bit, but yeah. also you have to remember we are in indoors. We're hitting off a of mat sure. yeah, versus yeah, yeah. kind of the outside, which that turf, the clubs are designed to go through and glide through turf, not necessarily a mat. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's that element of it as well. But um, I think, I think that's just a point I wanted to make is like, I didn't really hit too many solid shots and it was still going, yeah. you know, relatively consistently, you know, yeah. right of center and, and, you know, still got the distance. So yeah. I also like that the launch angle is 21.6 degrees, which is plenty high. Um, again, I, you mentioned the loft piece. It seems like more or less nowadays, like a 28 degree seven iron, you're, this is basically like we're testing a, a six iron. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's that's, there's that to consider, but the ball is still getting up there plenty high for someone of your club speed. And I think that's a really encouraging thing. And of course it's plenty of distance. And then the spins up there enough that the ball will not totally run off the green. I mean, you're getting, there's obviously a difference here of like 10 to uh, 11 yards from carry to total. Yeah. And I think where, if you were on a soft golf course, soft greens, that ball would kind of stick if you will. So, um, yeah, I think this is good. I mean, I like the launch and the height and, and those elements of this club just from this test for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a definitely when you're talking about someone that needs a little bit more distance or, just overall height and a little bit more spin. I mean, that's the thing that you find a lot with, uh, you know, club head speeds that are even, you know, 10 miles an hour less than mine is yeah. like they struggle to get the ball in the air and get decent spin. So great option for someone that needs yeah. help with that for sure. All right. So speaking of that, Jackie, um, let's, let's kind of start to wrap up here. We do our final thoughts segment. Um, and we've kind of gone, gone over the numbers here a little bit. So, um, you know, the, the type of player, you mentioned it a little bit already, but the type of player that would best benefit from the G730 iron, do you think? And I know you've already been working with some of these golfers before. So you've talked about it, players maybe need some distance, need some height. Yep. Um, can you maybe just describe that player a little bit more? Yeah, I would say, you know, a player that's definitely looking to get a little bit more distance. So maybe a slower swing speed player. Mm -hmm. um, that needs help getting the ball up in the air um as well as i would say even when you're talking about um direction someone that needs help you know maybe correcting uh mm. the slice just a little sure. bit you know if you're if you're fading it a little too much slicing it a little too much trying to get it a little bit straighter i mean all of those things kind of add up when you're talking about um this club yeah. uh definitely a lot of forgiveness in it um didn't necessarily strike all of them well and they still went relatively in the same bucket. So I think yeah. for the average player and, and, a you know, um, mid to high handicapper for sure, this is a great, yeah. great option. Yeah. I think 
everything you said sounds like it's, uh, you know, it, it, there's a lot of golfers out there that would oh, kind of fall into this window. And, you know, if you're looking at the spectrum of ping irons, you know, there's maybe the blueprint T on one end, and then the other end is probably the G730 irons. So yeah. depending on the type of golfer you are, your skill level, your experience, there's a lot to be gained from G730, I think. So uh, Jackie, thanks for coming in and swinging the G730. Uh, getting some testing done and getting your fitting insight here as well has been great. So um, golfers, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you schedule a fitting as well at Second Swing with someone like Jackie or any one of our uh, expert master club fitters, and they'll get you dialed in for G730 irons. Uh, Jackie, thank you again. Thank you.